may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Share, subscribe, like this video, make sure you put your prayer request in the bottom. Okay, we're finishing Sunday here, and we're going to go over some stuff from a Prophecy News Watch that I think is going to be very interesting for you all to know. So we're going to do that right now. Everybody on here, just make sure you always put your prayer request in the bottom. Okay, first of all, before we get into some of this stuff, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the red heifers today also. Uh, see, is worldwide Jews' hatred setting the stage for the tribulation period? I can already tell you, yes. In our current social media pol uh, political paradigm, people tend to see things two-dimensional, usually to the left or to the right. Of course, as current trends bear witness to, this is causing a great deal of social and political friction, which often spills into violence. Sometimes this is agitated and forces have deeper agenda, and sometimes it occurs uh, or organically aided by a spiritual enemy who hates mankind, who hates the Jews, and who hates God. The latest trigger point has been demonically inspired violence against the Jews is the war that Israel is conducting against Hamas and Hezbollah. Aside from the spiritual paradigm, which Christians view and stand with Israel, most radical people, even unbelievers, would have a sense of sympathizing with Hamas right now is akin to endorsing the kidnap, torture, rape, and beheading and murder of Jews. People who thought the horrors of the Holocaust was long behind them suddenly have shaken by a terrifying sense of foreboding as people uh, of the world over call for an annihilation of the Jews once again. In the early stages of Hitler's plan to exterminate the Jews, perhaps uh, ordinary people in far-off nations would have pleaded ignorance to the Jewish plight on the basis that the news didn't reach them. However, it's time this time around, the evidence of Jew hatred is there for all to see, since anti-Semites cannot resist posting their uh, uh, mental material online. It must be said that the virtual importance of Christians right now is the whole biblical worldview. In short, this means that the believer clings tightly to a very to very scriptures that offer practical and spiritual wisdom that enables us to consider everything was an encounter in the world from godly perspective for all people, believers or unbelievers. When faced with problems or challenges, our worldwide view becomes a source of foundation on which we make our actions and response. This means that whatever content we filter into worldview will determine how we act, speak, and think. Therefore, it is probably a little surprise that most vulgar displays of anti-Sethemism have been found on college and university campuses because of many colleges and universities of this era are indoctrinating the students and political progressives of unbiblical ideas. The fundamental reason behind this is the students are taught what to think rather than how to think. And an American newscaster once said, the professors dominate the, in, uh, the students. If you go up against them, they, they, their grades often suffer. There's a tyranny in higher education that gravely harming this nation. In other words, we got a bunch of evil college professors here teaching people to hate the Jews. Okay. Another reason that colleges and universities seem to be hotbeds for hatred, and for many have taught that the paradigm which uh, is which to view the world as an oppressor and oppressed class. The education system includes lower grade schools, has sought to address culture and radical prejudice, but has the fact inflamed the culture of race wars, which that's what they're doing. It's Lucifer. See, when you take God out of schools, he comes in, okay? And then all this evil comes in and starts teaching your kids. That's what's happened. And I see, 
From websites we read, ethnic studies encompass the culture, competence, critical thinking, collaboration, community, and creativity. It is relevant and accurate to, to the cultures in their classrooms and the path of understanding and appreciating everyone's identity, the fact that they created an evolution of identity. Ethnic studies, which help students understand how social construct is affected by race and root causes of opposition, power, and privilege. Furthermore, the New Haven Unified School District Ethnic Studies and Social uh, Justice Academy, which is part of James Logan High School, adopt the motto, Learn, Lead, Liberate, which features a socialist raised first grasping at a pencil. Don't be fooled by the beginning sounding of word ethnic studies. It's simply critical race theory. See, right now, we're teaching every kid around the world, especially here in the United States, that everything's racist, okay? And if you're a boy, you need to be a girl. If you're a girl, you need to be a boy. It's all going against the Bible. Now, who's behind that? That is Lucifer. It leads up to all this stuff that's happening, what you're seeing, the hatred toward the Jews. Lucifer hates the Jews, and he loves people that hate the Jews. You know, because Jesus was a Jew. Satan hates that. That's why he hates the Jews. That's why Satan has surrounded them with their enemies. So when you speak about hatred of the Jews, that tells you whose side you're on, okay? The Jews are God's people. They're his chosen people. We're grafted in once again. And that's just the way this is. So that's why you're seeing all this hatred. That's, Hitler tried to eliminate them off the planet. They didn't do anything to him. Every leader, crazy leader that's come and gone, including Nimrod, you name it, all the way down the list, you know that Lucifer is always trying to wipe out the Jews. I mean, that's what he's always tried to do. All through time, he's tried to wipe out the Jews. And it's no different now. You know, and people that don't know scripture, they're going around and picking the wrong side. Because let me tell you something. Blessed are those who bless the Jews. And if you don't bless the Jews, you go against the Jews. I don't want to be you. Because the king of all Jews is about to come rapture his church. And then he's going to lay a butt kick into everybody down here that went against the Jews. Okay? I hate to tell everybody, but the capital of the world, when Jesus gets down here, is in Jerusalem. Okay, it's not in the United States, it's not in Russia, it's not in China. Them are gone. The capital is going to be in Jerusalem because the king of all Jews will be down here. And he's going to rule the world with an iron fist. So if you don't like the Jews, well, you've got some problems ahead of you. Because the king of all Jews is Jesus. So what side are you on? Makes you think, don't it? Makes you think up here. Now, I've got more information on this red heifers. Game-changing developments are happening right now in Israel concerning the third temple. Probably the most critical missing link preventing the rebuilding of the temple is set to fall into place within months of crucial help with Christians. Now, that's this is a little bit past the article they're going through this. Meanwhile, Hamas is watching developments closely and have been claimed to be a major part of their motivation for the uh, the attack on October the 7th with tensions already at a boiling point from a Middle East will be shortly see Israel take bold steps toward rebuilding the temple. The first missing piece of the third temple is the infamous ashes of the red heifer it is now days away. This is months. This is a little bit back. These ashes are biblically main mandated for purification for a range of situations, including contact with dead bodies without the red heifers, ashes, priests and Levi's currently in training, but the Temple Institute are disqualified from serving the future rebuilt temple. Furthermore, with all the bloodshed on the Temple Mound through the centuries, the mound itself must be cleansed before the temple can be built. The program is finding an unblemished red heifer, which is extremely rare in recent years. Actually, more than that, it's been 2,000 years. Temple activists have had their own efforts in frustration time and again. Potential red heifer candidates, well, they've already got all that are required to be the sacrifice. They've already gotten her down to three. And like I said, we're days away now. It was this context of Bryce Stinson, a Christian rancher from Texas, baffled rabbis in 2022 as he invited them to the ranch. What happens next almost looks like it takes Hollywood movie scripts as the heifers are airlifted to Israel around one year old, which all this is done, being greeted at the airport in special ceremony, 
uh, by the rabbis. Although one of the five was disqualified last year due to an emergency emergence of a few white hairs, the remaining four remain on track. They're down to three now, and they've only got a couple of months to get this done. According to All Israel News, Temple Institute rabbis hope to perform the ceremony prior to Passover this year. It will, should be done here uh, in about two weeks. While the story of the flight of the red heifers is in Israel uh, as a journey has certainly stirred great excitement among Temple activists as well as Christian students of Bible prophecy. It cur uh, Curiously, hardly got a mention in mainstream Israel news. Also, it's not big news here. Even Christians don't have no clue what even it means. It will surprise many Christians to discover that, by large, secular uh, Israel uh, are unaware of these developments. In addition, more Orthodox Jews are opposed to any current moves to rebuild the temple. Of course they are. However, the radical Islamic world understands the significance of the rival of the Red Evers. Yeah, the devil knows. He knows what it means. And with a co incursion of Hamas called in a famous of deadly October 7th terror attacks, speaking of a 100-day mark of the current war of Israel, uh, the military spokesman for Hamas said that the aggression against them was to stop this. Uh, where would the temple be? It says Israel government officials are, are highly aware of the Islamic sensitive concern to the temple mound, which I think that they'll have that... Uh, the, the Antichrist will give them the Temple Mount back. While the ashes of the red heifer become available in the next couple of days, basically in the next couple of weeks, the Temple rebuilding project still seems unrealistic in the current environment. The fears of Israel's government, see, they don't realize the rapture of the church is getting ready to happen. Then the Antichrist comes on the scene and gives them the ground. That's how they get the two-state solution. See, these people, they don't know prophecy, but that's how this is going to get done. The rapture of the church happens. See, a lot of these people don't believe in the rapture, so they're going to find that out very soon that there's a rapture. Once the rapture happens, the Antichrist comes in after World War III, the Psalms 83 war. Israel takes down her walls because she feels like she's safe. The Antichrist works out a peace deal with them, okay? And it separates them and Palestine. Palestine gets a state, and then they get to build their temple, which takes about two months to build. So, all this leads up to where we are now. Now, this is going to happen here very soon. All the stuff for the red heifers is in motion as we speak. Let's see what else. There was something else on this I was wanting to do. And let's see. I hate when I get lost in these stories. And some of these are hard to get back back to where I was. Okay. See, evidently, they there must be an update to this, but I'm not seeing it. Because this story right here is supposed to be Red Heifer's ready for the temple by Passover. So, you know, we've got Passover coming up here in April in Israel, so... See if there was anything else on that, and doesn't look like it is. Do 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 do. do. No, looks like that's it. That's the, what we got on that red heifer story. Uh, like I said, we're very close. That's going to happen. They look look to try to do it on March the 29th. Okay, they're running out of time. They got three left now. They said the three that they have will do everything for the whole. Basically, total tribulation. That's it covers all the people. It, it does. You'll be amazed what one heifer will do. I mean, it, it definitely purifies all the people, the land, the temple. That's all they was waiting on for two thousand years. Was this, and God waits till now to put that out there. That shows you how close we are to the rapture. Trust in the gospel. First Corinthians fifteen one through four. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Past, present, future. He died was buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. Trust in the blood of Jesus. We're very close to getting out of here, people. The Red Heifers is the most amazing story, a 2,000-year prophecy, people. And it's here. And we're weeks, so we're not even two weeks away from it. And then I'll tell you, we'll not, they're not going to let us know, but we're going to know, we're going to see it in the news, not from what they did, 
But I believe the earthquakes, the volcanoes, everything, it's going to go crazy. And I believe we'll know in the spirit things are just going to be, man ain't going to know what's happening. The world ain't going to know what's happening, but we know what happened. The rapture of the church is very close. Trust in the blood of Jesus, people. If you're out there, call upon Jesus before it's too late, because literally we're running out of time. Thank you for all your support for the channel. Thank you for all those who bought me coffee and those who bought the super stickers here on YouTube. God bless each and every one of you. If I don't see or hear from you again, I'll see you in heaven. Thank you once again for tuning in to Global Rapture Watchers, where we do daily updates here on YouTube, letting you know that we're one day closer to our Lord and Savior coming back. Thank you for all the support for this channel. This channel was created for God's sheep, those that are waiting for their Lord and Savior to come back and get us in these last days. We do updates once to two times a day here on YouTube. Thank you for all your support for the channel. God bless each and every one of you.